Coming up on the Ultimate Sportsman's Lodge. We're under two weeks to go to get this whole place finished up. It's really all hands on deck right now. And the race to the finish line is do or die trying. So there's huge teams of people here finishing it up. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they promise me it's going to get done. And after six long and grueling months. Oh my gosh, <laughs> look at this. Wow. wow. We have the right address. Chris and Amy Dorsey are building a massive 10,000 square foot outdoorsman's paradise. It wouldn't be an ultimate sportsman's lodge if you didn't have a trophy room. A sauna, a pizza oven. Top of the food chain kitchen, liar's bar. Isn't but... her bathrooms. <laughs> We're gonna have to bring our A game to make this thing work. Let's get this baby going, huh? We had some close friends that shared some advice on their own sportsman's lodge. To come to a place like this was such beauty and solitude. This is important for the family to have this kind of a place in the American West. We're Chris and Amy Dorsey, and we're living our dream by building the ultimate sportsman's lodge. In Sedalia, Colorado, it's just over six months since the Dorseys broke ground on their ultimate sportsman's lodge, and time is running out. So the pressure's on, this house has to be finished, the movers are scheduled, there's no backing off of this date now. The crushing pressure to hit their deadline has pushed the teams to the edge. You know, when you tell me you're gonna do something and you can't meet the deadline, it just, it, it doesn't work. And an unrelenting cycle of snow, melt, mud, and more snow throws predictability out the window. It's the unknown that makes you kind of get up early in the morning or keeps you awake at night. With the moving in day right around the corner, there's still a long punch list to knock out. Today, much of the work centers on the most expansive interior space in the lodge. We still have to finish the drywall in the great room. We've got to finish the ceiling in the great room. We've got to install the cabinetry. We have to finish the fireplace stone. But Greg's list just keeps on going. We have to finish the entry stone. We've got to finish the metal on the exterior. We have to finish the landscaping, the septic system. The amount of pressure that's in my head every day is, is daunting. I know that there's still so much to get finished. We built a house before. I knew how much time and work and commitment is in it. And you know, you start out with a project, you're very happy. Near the end though, you remember why you said you were never gonna do this ever again. It's a, an enormous undertaking. With time and patience running out, Amy keeps a sharp eye on the progress. And something seems amiss with the stone fireplace at the north end of the great room. So with 25 construction guys, apparently I'm the only one here that noticed that the fireplace is off center by about three inches. Amy noticed that uh, there seemed to be a difference in the re reveal on either side of the fireplace. And uh, so we checked it out and sure enough, she was right. We were two inches off, so we're gonna get it corrected and move forward quick. I'll never be able to sit in front of this fireplace until they get this fixed. Fortunately, in the kitchen, everything is clicking into place. The last of the cabinets are going in, just in time to fit the granite countertops. The biggest slab weighs in at a whopping 1,000 pounds. I get nervous, because this is a huge piece of granite, and it's double stacked edge. Ow! Ow, ow, ow! Hold on, hold Set on. Set it down. Hold on. We have um, appliances coming tomorrow, so the real rush today is to get all the countertops in place and the appliances slide in tomorrow. <laughs> to see it now in this full piece, you know, from where it was way back when in the granite yard, it's all come together, and I'm super excited about it. The next day, the kitchen appliances arrive, right in the aftermath of yet another snow, melt, freeze, and more snow cycle. I just got in a car accident on my way into town to pick up some materials, took out another builder on his way in. Uh, we've got a deadline to meet, so uh, crippling people doesn't help. Especially when there's an entire truckload of top-of-the-line appliances to unload. So Amy's kitchen is really unique in that there's almost more appliances than cabinetry right now in the kitchen. For instance, she has two dishwashers, which is great for what she's going to be doing for entertaining. Anybody who's done a lot of entertaining, there's absolutely nothing worse than ending this great big party and then you look at this horrible stack of dishes sitting in your kitchen that have to be tackled. So it was worth that little bit of extra investment to put that second dishwasher in. 
We have two unique column refrigerators and they're each 30 inches wide. So there's a lot more capacity there for, you know, Chris's game to be stored in, you know, a freezer. The last neat feature is her big range. So this is a 48 inch range. It has six burners and it has two ovens instead of one. So she can cook several things at one time. One of Chris's big requirements is that we put the range in this center island. It's designed so that you can sit around it and actually watch whoever's cooking cook and socialize and have a cocktail. And then of course, I had to have the full-size wine cooler there because who doesn't need a full-size wine cooler in their kitchen? While the Dorsey's new kitchen comes closer to completion, Chris and the twins take a field trip. Look at the size of that catfish. That's as big as you are, man. Go check it out. The outdoors, that's such an important part of my life that I want to share with them, but I also want them to know what does that mean to be a sportsman? What does it mean to go fishing? What does it mean to look at a stream and say, let's keep it clean and become a voice for conservation? And I think just reinforcing what magic is in that lifestyle. Check out that wall up there, guys. What? See all those logos? Uh -huh. Yes. And those are all the conservation groups. I think it's really cool. The fact that you can come here, have a good time, support your favorite conservation groups that are working for you. Yep. That's a pretty, pretty cool idea, I think. Are you guys ready to order it? I think yes. so. Yeah. We are. While Chris and the boys take time for lunch, back at the Ultimate Sportsman's Lodge, there's another major appliance that Amy can't wait to fire up. So the dog got a spa, so I get a spa, right? Even now that it's emptied of melting snow, the steel tub weighs more than 500 pounds. I'm gonna see who I can sucker into helping us. Yeah. All right, ready? This is one of those rooms that, that I really wanted in this house. And it has a sunken hot tub that is about six by nine feet or so. It's stainless, it's, it's beautiful. We're gonna come in from the outside and there's gonna be this warm room that you can soak in the hot tub, you can sit in the dry sauna. It's just going to be so fantastic. I think it's supposed to see six. But I'm not seeing very many seats in there, so it's a hot tub made for one. <laughs> From this point on, it really doesn't matter what Mother Nature throws at us. We've got to figure out a way to make it happen. Oh, man. They did a number on this one. It's like two-inch thick steel. At the Dorsey's build site in Colorado, crazy weather patterns continue to torment the workers. With each day lost, they're growing increasingly desperate to get to the finish line. It's been a crazy couple of weeks here where it's been really wreaking havoc on the schedule because we can't get stuff done. So there's huge teams of people here finishing it up. I don't know how they're gonna do it, but they promise me it's gonna get done. And schedules aren't the only things getting crushed. Oh man. I did a number on this one. This is like two inch thick steel. Snow and mud around the lodge knocks a critical piece of equipment out of commission. That's not good. Over the weekend, somebody used the forklift uh, and, and got it stuck back here behind the house and got it stuck really good. Best I can think is that they stuck the fork in the ground to try to push the machine out and bent the fork. But man, it's just did a number on it. From this point on, it really doesn't matter what Mother Nature throws at us. We've got to figure out a way to make it happen. The moving trucks are scheduled. They're looking to move in, and we've got to hit that date somehow, some way. With work outside the lodge losing more and more ground every day, the finish work on the inside is full bore ahead. Today, we are going through all of the plumbing boxes that were delivered here to get them spread throughout the house. When you have a house this big, you have to have a master list and everything has an item. In the great room, the stone on the fireplace nears the top. It's turning out sweet, looks really awesome. It's gonna be a great centerpiece to this, this great room. Centering the entire lodge, the great room's fireplace is at the north end. The kitchen's on the east, and main dining area sits at the southwest corner. For the centerpiece above the dining table, the Dorseys have commissioned a one-of-a-kind sculpture. 
and 1,200 miles to the west in Carmel Valley, California, artist Lance Bowen is creating that signature piece for the Dorseys. So let me show you the scale of this piece. And at this point, of course, it's just in process. It's not three-dimensional, but this is the larger-than-life-size brown trout going to Chris and Amy for the Ultimate Sportsman Lodge. I went big to uh, match the bold architecture of the lodge. Lance Bowen is known for creating giant sculptures of fish and other wildlife out of hand-tooled leather and found objects, and his pieces are fanciful and truly unique. Who would ever think of taking junk leather, an old belt, an old saddle, and creating something magnificent? and custom and when lance put this thing together and, and talked about creating a six foot leather trout you know it's, it's the one piece you could put in your house that nobody else would have but instead of fitting the dorsey's trout with an old saddle lance is hand tooling a surprise into the leather we talked about creating a brown trout, but they have no idea of all the imagery that I created on the surface of the leather. The whole life cycle of the brown trout is tooled within the surface, from the eggs to the juvenile fish. And then there's some adult brown trout that are kind of ambushing these small fish here. Chris and Amy are, are building just a beautiful lodge there in Colorado. There's so much nature around them. I want to bring that brown trout, larger and life size, into their lodge to, to tell that story. In less than a week, Lance will deliver his masterpiece in person to the Dorseys to take its permanent place among the last of the finished rooms. But I hope every day they see it, it reminds them, hey, we should get out there on the water and do some fishing. Yeah, everybody's got to work and they've got to work hard. We've got to work on top of each other and just deal with it. It's gonna be a big push to get it done. This is our dream home. We've just got to get this done. I don't know what else to do to turn up the heat. Outdoor Life Magazine was founded in 1898 in which American city? Denver, Colorado, New York City, New York, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, or Detroit, Michigan? Outdoor Life originated in Denver under the title A Sportsman's Magazine of the West. Early illustrated covers gave way to photographs in 1903, and the magazine's offices moved to New York in 1934. This is brought to you by Outdoor Life Magazine. Learn more at greatamericancountry.com. It's the final countdown to complete the Dorsey's Ultimate Sportsman's Lodge in Sedalia, Colorado. You know, until you actually get into a place, until you move in, until you wake up in the morning and you see that first light of the day, until you let the dog out, kind of walk around the property, it just really isn't home, but it's getting close. But with the move-in just a week away, getting close is not good enough for Amy. So, no kick plates. The backsplash is still not finished. The electrical on the refrigerator wasn't placed in the right spot. The plumbing for the coffee maker isn't finished yet. There are no lights. This is our dream home. We just got to get this done, and I don't know what else to do to turn up the heat. And that heat is being felt throughout the entire build. You know, it's really all hands on deck right now. I mean, everybody's got to work, and they've got to work hard. We've got to work on top of each other and just deal with it, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be a big push to get to get this done. At least there's a bit of good news. The damaged forklift is back in action, just in time to help with the massive steel and copper fire pit that will sit in the center of the back patio of the lodge. The lava rock itself is decorative. It hides all the metal aspects, makes it look a little bit more natural and earthy. All right, you ready for this? It takes three strong men to move 300 pounds of the solid steel hand-forged logs above the gas lines and lava rocks.
You don't yeah. want to have to lift that out again. Our family enjoys the outdoors, and, and being outside around a fire is just a big deal. So inviting. The company is also creating a 17-foot fire feature for the patio, where gas-fueled flames will bubble to the surface, creating a dazzling spectacle. You know, when you see a fire, people are drawn to fires. They just instinctively go there, and I think we've been doing that for about 10,000 years or so. But the patio fires will have to wait. It's mid-January, and with more snow predicted, the finished exteriors will likely stay on hold until spring. Not far away in Berthoud, Colorado, artist Steve LeBlanc is turning up his own heat by working with a welder to finish a 300-pound bronze sculpture for the Dorseys. Going in front of the Ultimate Sportsman Lodge, and I gotta make sure the Ultimate Deer looks perfect for him, so let's get the head up on there. Steve is doing a, a life-size bronze of the largest white-tailed deer I've ever taken. And oh, by the way, that was taken here in Colorado. Just a magnificent buck, just a spectacular deer. This is the fun part. Yeah. It's looking good. I can't wait for this place to be done for a lot of reasons, but one in particular is all the people that have been a part of it. You know, the artists, you know, the, the Banovich paintings, you know, the Barlow bronzes, the LeBlanc bronzes, Lance Bowen's amazing leather work, Sushan Smetana, the photographer, and Mike Jankowski, the taxidermist. I mean, these are all people that are a part of this build, that are part of our lives. And, and I want them to see this. I want, to, I want them to see their work and our habitat and know that they're, they're part of the clan here. Back at the build, the front door is ready to welcome all that enter. So we've got these really cool bronze sculptures that are door knockers. So Chris got these special for the house. Kind of fits with the theme of the Ultimate Sportsman's Lodge. You know, it's the details that really make this place, like these custom door knockers created by Carol Daniluk. They're just awesome. I mean, there's no one person that did this. I mean, it was everybody working together. Oh my gosh, look at this! Wow. wow! We have the right address. Go behind the build and see before and after action photos at greatamericancountry.com forward slash ultimate lodge. It was just a little over six months ago that ground was broken for the Dorsey's Lodge on their 16 pristine acres facing the front range of the Colorado Rockies. It was the place. I mean, it was just beautiful. It gave us the acreage we wanted. It was ultimate by all standards. I couldn't have imagined a better place for this house to have been built. This is really a lifelong dream, and, and uh, it's not easy to build something like this. And we're in the final few hours of finishing this thing up and seeing what we've got done since the end of July to now is just amazing. And over the last several months, six rooms in the south end of the lodge have already come to life. The Alaska Theater, the locker room and dog wash, the outdoor kitchen, photo gallery, and the trophy room. I mean, there's no one person that did this. I mean, it was everybody working together and taking care of each other and really being a team. Perfect. And now, the rest of the rooms are finally ready for their unveiling. Oh my gosh, look at this! Wow. wow! We have the right address. That's this incredible. is beautiful. <laughs> these they're are nice. beautiful. Look at they're this. Nice. They've done an excellent job with these cabinets. This whole house is ergonomic. Look at that. Oh, yeah. You could put a half an elk in there, don't you think? Let's check this out down here. Wow, look at that. Isn't this beautiful? It is. Well, let's check out the bedroom. Luke's gonna love this. 
And this is Nate's room. Oh, yeah. He's going to dig this. From the great room and kitchen to the north end master bedroom, private sitting room, and master bath, the ultimate sportsman's lodge becomes a stunning reality. Look at this. It's feeling like home now. Yeah. But there's still a few important things missing. We need a Banovich right there. I well, mean, it has this. to have a Banovich. And right on time, artists and friends John Banovich and Lance Bowen arrive to personally hang their finished masterpieces in the Dorsey's new home. Lance helps John move his painting called Tusk into the Dorsey's new sitting room. I've spent a lot of time in Africa chasing elephant. I've even swum with elephants. And the intimate details of John's original addition to the Dorsey's new home are incredible. John, that's amazing. Thanks, Chris. I think it looks great in this space. Mm -hmm. Really sets the tone for the room. Chris, here it goes. Don't here fall. Go. Don't hurt that artwork, whatever you do. In the great room, Lance Bowen hangs his original six-foot leather trout masterpiece in its new home. The big fish becomes a frame for all the imagery within. It tells the whole story of the, the brown trout. It's not an ultimate sportsman's lodge until you have something signature in the great room. And man, it's that signature. I couldn't see my sculpture going to a more beautiful location. Sitting here now, looking at the house, I couldn't have imagined a better place. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can never have Christmas for the first time as a kid again, but it's about as close as I think I'll ever get again. I have a lot of good years here. Yeah. It's a home. Home is in your heart. It's not just a building. There's a lot of good heart in this building.